Hello from the Force Tronics YouTube channel and welcome to electrical signal routing with N-channel and P-channel MOSFETs. And this is going to be part one in a series of solid state switching videos, similar to what I just did with mechanical relays. And if you're interested in that, please go to my channel and check it out. But let's start off with N-channel and P-channel MOSFETs, using those as simple switches for electrical signals. Check me out on Patreon where you can find exclusive content from some of my videos and video series whether that's hardware design information or code or whatever. And I'm going to have some exclusive content from this video series as well that I'll mention in the video. Okay, let's get started. So I did a series on mechanical relays. And so I think it's important to kind of compare and contrast mechanical versus solid state. So what are the pros and cons of solid state switches versus mechanical relays? Well, first off, one of the pros is there's no hot switching and there's no switch bounce. If you're not familiar with what hot switching or switch bounce is for mechanical switching devices, check out my previous video series. Also, solid state switches can often be lower cost. That's not always true, but when you're using simple MOSFETs versus mechanical relays, they're often lower cost. They can have a longer life. As long as you use them within spec, they'll, they'll last forever, whereas mechanical relays with moving parts will eventually break down. The drawbacks to solid state versus mechanical is there is no air gap, right? There's with mechanical relays, you get air in between your signal paths. And a lot of industries, as I mentioned in that video series, like that for safety reasons. And related to that, you know, solid state devices often have leakage currents because you don't have that air gap. And there is a small amount of current flow in the solid state device, but it'll be very minimal. And then biasing to an on or off state can be a little bit more complex. And of course, we're going to talk about that in this video. Okay, for the solid state switching series in part one, as I mentioned already, we're going to talk about N-channel and P-channel MOSFETs, the simplest type of solid state switch. We'll talk about how to implement them and how to control them, how to bias them. And we'll focus on the specs and functionality that's related to using MOSFETs as switches. Of course, MOSFETs can also be used as amplifiers. We're not going to focus on that, just on the aspects related to using them as switches. Part two, we'll look at triax, which can be, which is a solid state device that, that can be used for switching AC signals. We'll talk about solid state relays, and we'll also talk about solid state switching MUX ICs. Okay, real quick, related to my last video series on mechanical switches and this video series, here is the exclusive content I'll have available on Patreon. I'm going to have a hardware design board that's going to have mechanical and solid state switches. It's going to be able to handle power DC and AC power line signals. It's going to have an ESP32 on it so it can be controlled wirelessly. And so on Patreon, I'll have the PCB design files for this. I'll have the Gerber and assembly files if you wanted to send it to a manufacturer to have it made. And then I'll have a code example to control it from the cloud. And of course, I'll have a exclusive video on Patreon that just gives an overview of the design. Okay, let's start with N-channel MOSFETs. And I'm gonna call this a crash course. So over on the right, I have a simple MOSFET circuit. N-channel MOSFETs are often used as low side switches, meaning they're connected to ground or close to ground. And so they cut off current flowing to ground when they're open and when they're closed, they allow a path to flow to ground. So the MOSFET has three main terminals, gate, which is on the side or on the left, drain, which is on the top, and then source. And we know where the source is compared to the drain because this L-shaped arrow is where the source is connected to. And if you notice, this arrow is pointing towards the gate. That tells us that this is an N-channel MOSFET. If it was a P-channel, the arrow would be pointing the opposite direction. And for this switch design, what happens is current flows from the drain to the source, from VCC to ground. The gate is just used to control the MOSFET, and in our case, you turn it from an open to a close and from a close to an open. RL is meant to represent the load. So I'm showing this in the circuit as a resistor, but it could be a motor, it could be a solenoid, it also could be a mechanical relay. I showed a circuit like this in the mechanical relay tutorial. RCL is just a current limiting resistor. And so control signal means our logic level to turn 
the MOSFET on and off or close or open or switch. And this could be a microcontroller pin. The current limiting resistor is because there is parasitic capacitance at the gate. And so to prevent inrush current, when we first change the voltage level, this resistor protects our digital logic pin from overload of current by limiting the current flow. And then RP is a pull down resistor. So the way an end channel MOSFET works is if the gate has an equal voltage potential to the source, meaning if you got your voltmeter and put one lead here at the gate and one lead at the source and it was zero volts, then the end channel MOSFET is going to be off or it's going to act like an open. The same is true as if the gate was negative compared to the source. So if you put your voltmeter here and you had a negative voltage between these two potentials, then this is going to act like an open. The way to turn on our switch or close our switch is to make the gate more positive voltage wise than the source. And when I say more positive, how much more positive? Well, you want it to be higher than the voltage threshold of the MOSFET, which is a spec in the data sheet. So let's say this MOSFET has a voltage threshold of 2.5 volts or 3 volts. That means we need to have a voltage potential difference, a positive voltage potential difference, where the gate is at least 3 volts more positive than the source to close our switch so current can flow from VCC through our load to ground. Now it's important to note, once the voltage is applied to the gate, very little current flows from the gate to the source, you know, micro amps or nano amps. So we use this pull down resistor to keep the MOSFET or our switch at the state we want it to whenever we're turning on our circuit or whenever our pin that's controlling it is at an unknown state. Because there's such little current flow that requ that's required to turn our switch on, we don't want like a floating voltage or a stray voltage to change the state of our switch. So using this pull down resistor ensures that our switch stays open and that it only closes when we apply an active voltage signal to the gate. Okay, if you watch my videos before, you know I'm big on data sheets. Here I have a BSS 138 end channel MOSFET. This is a MOSFET that's been around for a while. I use it in a lot of different designs. It's a low powered MOSFET. so. It can handle up to 60 volts and up to 360 milliamps of continuous current flowing from the drain to the source when the switch is closed. This is an enhancement mode MOSFET, which is something I'll talk about later. Here are some specs related to a MOSFET. VDS is voltage drain to source. So this is the maximum voltage drop across the MOSFET when our switch is open. So that's 60 volts here. VGS is voltage gate to source. So they're saying the maximum voltage difference between the gate and the source can only be plus or minus 20 volts or you'll damage the MOSFET. And then here's a spec we already saw. ID or current flowing from the drain, the max continuous current is 360 milliamps. And then RDS on. This is the resistance of the drain to source when the MOSFET is on or our switch is closed. The MOSFET switch doesn't act like a perfect short, so they're saying the max ohmage it'll have, or resistance, when a signal's flowing through it is 1.6 ohms, which is important to keep in mind. Okay, an important spec that I wanted to show you is VGS with this TH in parentheses, and sometimes this is just called VTH, but this once again stands for gate to source voltage, but the TH stands for threshold. So what is the minimum threshold gate to source voltage potential difference needed to turn on our switch or close it. So for this, it's only 1.2 typical, 1.2 volts, but you always want to go off the max. So you need at least 1.5 volts to turn that on. And as we saw earlier, the max voltage you can have difference without damaging it is 20 volts. So if we use a 3.3 volt logic or 5 volt logic, that's plenty of voltage difference to, to close our switch. So this, once again, is an important spec. Okay, now let's look at a P-channel MOSFET. And a P-channel MOSFET is often used as a high side switch. Our end channel was connected to ground. Our P-channel, we have it connected to the, the power source or the electrical signal source, and that's why we're calling it a high side switch.
And notice our MOSFET in this image is upside down compared to the last one we saw. So the source is on top, the drain is on the bottom, and the gate is on the side once again. And notice, like I said, we notice this is a P-channel MOSFET because the arrow is pointing away from the gate with an N-channel it's pointing towards the gate. So a P-channel MOSFET is almost like opposite of how to operate it compared to an N-channel. So it's open when the gate voltage is equal to or higher than the source. So if you notice in this configuration, I have RPU, which is pull-up resistor. So with VCC and the pull-up resistor, the gate is at the same potential as the source, so it's off or our switch is open. To turn it on, we need the gate to be more negative than the source by whatever the threshold voltage is for this MOSFET. So that means if we place a voltmeter between the gate and the source, the positive lead on the gate and the negative lead on the source, we need that voltage potential to be negative for this to turn on. Another thing you might realize is since we're connected to VCC and not ground, it's harder for us to control the gate with a microcontroller or some kind of simple voltage logic. We're sort of floating at this higher voltage potential, which could damage a microcontroller if we connect it to the gate. So how do we deal with this? Well, I often use a resistor divider network between the gate along with an N-channel MOSFET because we know an N-channel MOSFET can be easily controlled with a logic level that's referenced to ground. So this is a very similar circuit that we just saw and we have a pull down resistor. So when this N-channel MOSFET is off or acts like an open and there's a low signal at its gate, we VCC at the source is the same voltage at the gate. So therefore our P-channel MOSFET is off or acts like an open. If I put our control signal high and I turn on the N-channel MOSFET so it acts like a closed switch, all of a sudden we have a path to ground. Now our voltage divider, which is based on this formula, can create a negative voltage between RPU or the source and the gate. Now it doesn't have to be a negative voltage to ground, it just has to be a negative voltage between the source and the gate. So if you look at this formula, Vs being VCC, we're going to subtract Vs from our voltage from the same voltage times our resistor divider network, which is going to make it less than Vs. So we're going to get a negative voltage at the gate. And that negative voltage has to be at least equal to or higher or more negative than V threshold. So let's look at an implementation of this. Okay, here's a P-channel MOSFET circuit, very similar to what we just saw, and this is you know, we're viewing this schematic in my Eagle CAD software. This is actually for design for powering a lot of LEDs. And so what I wanted to do is I wanted to have a switch that allows me to shut off power to the LEDs. So in case my lighting fixture is overheating or in case it's not positioned correctly, I can shut off power to the LED. So I'm using this as a, a power switch. So VDD in this application is 60 volts. And then I have my resistor divider network, I have my N-channel MOSFET, and for this N-channel MOSFET, I'm using the BSS-138, which was the data sheet we looked at. This P-channel MOSFET is actually, even though in the schematic they're the same size, it's actually a much, it's a larger MOSFET because it's higher power. It can handle, I think, up to 80 volts and 6.5 amps, where the N-channel MOSFET is a lower power, which is fine for this application. Okay, if you look at my formula, I'm showing you the VGS max, the VGS max is negative or plus 20, but the voltage threshold is negative 3.5 volts. So what do I do? Well, I chose a resistor that's 10K and one that's almost 50K. So if we do the resistor divider net math, which is we take our bottom resistor and we divide it by R7 and R6 added together, which is almost 60 kilo ohms, and we divide that, we get some type of ratio. We times that by 60 volts and then subtract 60 volts and we get negative 10 volts. And remember, this isn't negative 10 volts reference to ground. This is negative 10 volts between the gate and the source. So since our voltage threshold is 3.5 volts, negative 10 will turn that MOSFET on. And I chose negative 10 because negative 10 will give me a very low RDS on or resistance 
so I don't lose or waste power uh, flowing current through the MOSFET. So here's an example implementation of a P-channel MOSFET, a high side switch that we can control with a simple logic, digital logic level from a microcontroller. Okay, let's finish this video with some other design notes that's important when using a MOSFET as a switch. So you heard me mention enhancement mode when we were looking at that data sheet for that N-channel MOSFET. There's enhancement mode and there's depletion mode. Enhancement mode, and this is the majority of the MOSFETs on the market, this means that their default condition is open or off. This means that to close our switch, we must actively drive the gate to the potential or the voltage threshold it needs to be to close the switch. So enhancement mode MOSFETs act like single pole, single throw, form A switches. And a form A switch just means its default state is open. But they also have depletion mode MOSFETs. That means the MOSFET is, its default condition is closed. So if we think of an end channel MOSFET, we don't actively have to drive the gate to a higher voltage than the source because when we turn it on, it will already be in that condition. That means we must actively pull it low to open the switch. So this means a depletion mode MOSFET acts like a form B switch where it starts in the normally closed position. Then we also have to consider when is it appropriate to drive our MOSFET switch with a digital logic level, a low power digital logic level from, for instance, a microcontroller, or when we need a specialty gate driver circuit or gate driver IC. Well, gate driver circuits can often be isolated. So if you want your control circuit or your microprocessor to be isolated from the MOSFET circuit, a lot of times you can buy gate driver circuits that are automatically isolated and they use optocoupler coupler technology to isolate the two circuits. Another thing you might use a driver circuit for is to get the ideal gate voltage for the lowest RDS on condition. A microcontroller is not going to put out 15 or 10 volts. If you need that type of voltage level to get a good RDS or the lowest possible RDS, then you might want to use a driver circuit. And the last example would be if you want your switch to be actuated fast or real quick. So this is important in power electronic applications. But the idea is I mentioned earlier, MOSFETs at their gate have some type of parasitic capacitance. And they typically call this spec a gate charge. And it's typically given in columns or nano columns. And as an example, the GT700 P-channel MOSFET, which is the one I showed in my example, that has a gate charge spec of 75 nanocoulombs. So if we wanted to turn that switch on in 100 nanoseconds, how do we do that? We can divide the gate charge spec by 100 nanoseconds and we get 750 milliamps. So that means to turn the switch on very quick, we need a drive circuit that can put out at least 700 milliamps. Now, of course, the gate isn't going to consume 750 milliamps for a very long time. That's just the initial inrush current we need to quickly charge up that capacitor so we can drive that gate quickly. Once again, this gate capacitance is the same reason we use a current limiting resistor when we're using a low power you know, microcontroller pin to drive the MOSFET. Okay, that's it for electrical signal routing with N and P channel MOSFETs. As I mentioned in part two of this solid state switching series, we'll look at using triax to route AC electrical signals. And by the time I come out with part two in mid-July, we'll have the exclusive Patreon content for the wireless switching board available. If you have any questions, use the comments section below. And if you think I missed anything, please use the comment section below to add that. Thank you for watching.